McMoney is still home to many Mi'kmaq peoples, the original caretakers of this land. We are all treaty people. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Maritime Athletic Profiles for tonight's coverage of the Ospreys Winter Classic Basketball Tournament live from Armbre Academy in Halifax, Nova Scotia. How you doing, folks? Game three of today's first day of tournament action coming up shortly here as we have the visiting Horton High Griffins from Port Williams, Nova Scotia, taking on the host, Armbre Ospreys. The starters for the Griffins, number three, Declan Palmer. Number four, Sam Moore. Number five, Mason Johnson. Number 12, Noah Beaton. And number 14, Ryan Newcomb. As this is Horton's first game of action, Armbre played this afternoon, losing 92-79 to the Millwood Knights. Second game of the day saw the Bayview Sharks defeat the Woodlawn Panthers by a score of 90-80. And today's starters for the Armbre Ospreys. Number one, Ronai Beals, the grade 10 guard. Number four, Ali Nadeau, grade 10 guard forward, fresh off an MVP honor at this past weekend's Grammar Classic Tournament. Number six, Jalen Berglund Simmons, the grade 11 wing. Number 12, Sam Proietti, the grade 12 forward. And finally, the man in the middle, number 15, Trevay Jones, the grade 10 center. My name's Alan April, joined here today on webcast by a lot of basketball knowledge. We've got Coach Bev Greenlaw to my left and Coach Leslie States to my right. How are we doing tonight, Bev? Not bad. Do we have any update on Peyton Flint? What I do team? not have an update. Yeah, I did get an update from Coach JT just a moment ago. Peyton has x-rays and he has um, broken his tibia and he is scheduled for surgery tomorrow. Yeah, that was the fear terrible. after, yeah. So okay. uh, a big loss, obviously, for the Armbray Ospreys and last year's Metro High School All-Star grade 10 forward Peyton Flint was injured during this afternoon's game uh, against Millwood. But as we've talked about throughout the weekend, the Ospreys do have some depth and they have some young players who are ready and eager to get some more floor time. So we'll see who steps up tonight as Ronai Beals Dishes it to Treve Jones on the left block. Kick nice. out, Beals left open, triple, cash. They call him money for a reason. Ronai Beals opens up the scoring with a triple. Pass was really, really important to make that happen. We've talked about the playmaking of Treve Jones, one of the many things he does well for this Armbre Ospreys team. Nice dish down low and an easy finish by the Horton big man, Noah Beaton. And this Horton team has some size down low. Jones up top for Pro Yeti. Beals, don't leave him open. Missed the second one, but Horton's gonna have to make some defensive adjustments in that zone defense, leaving Beals open at the 45. Spinning in the lane is Sam Moore. Well defended there by Berglund Simmons. Jones with the help. Now Nadeau kicks it to Beals. This time he's guarded. Looks like Horton back into a man defense after beginning the game in a 2-3 zone. Pro Yeti, yeah, I think triple. they're still more or less 2-3, Alan. It's just that one guy distorted a little bit, which we'll see how they play it. Mason Johnson now dishes it to Declan Palmer, and Palmer knocks down a triple. And got here? this Horton High program perennially one of the best in the province. Okay, pure man now. As Pro Yeti dishes it to Ali Nadeau at the left wing. Nadeau had a nice game this afternoon, fresh off a big tournament in the Grammar Classic. Beals, smooth take to the rim, couldn't finish with the right hand on the left side, and here come the Griffins the other way. Stopping and popping is Sam Moore, and Horton off to a quick 7-3 lead, less than two minutes into this one. Jones with it on the left wing, up top now for Nadeau. Berglund Simmons, defended by Palmer. Berglund Simmons knifes in, shot clock down to 12, lost the handle, and not expecting that pass was Mason Johnson, and Pro Yeti takes advantage for the easy two. As Declan Palmer, grade 11 guard, dishes it up top for Mason Johnson, and a travel on the catch. 
So Leslie, the opening minutes here, what what are your impressions on this game and what the Osprey need to do tonight to uh, bounce back after a tough loss this afternoon? Well, I think, you know, for Horton, as has been in uh, four years, they've always been good three-point shooters. So, again, the Armbre has hit, has hit a couple three, or they left, they left when I shoot, but at the same time, Horton has the same capability. So they definitely need to make sure they road on that. As Pro Yeti misses the three, one and done, here come Horton the other way. Driving baseline, extra pass, kick out, open three there by Mason Johnson, and the rebound corralled by Palmer. And Palmer knocks down the triple, and right on cue, second three ball of the after of the evening for the Griffins, and they've doubled up the Osprey 10-5 in the early going. Berglund Simmons, dribble handoff for Beals. Yeah, good idea. Looking to make that pass through the middle, and Bev, that's one of the ones maybe high or low, probably not directly at arm level. Yeah, you get... Uh, Location, touch, timing, and consequence, anatomy of a good pass. Um, consequence is thought of by too few kids <laughs> in general, but the other aspects uh, are far too often are not all there either. The idea was good. Um, there was a gap if he'd gone slightly up, sort of pop it up just below the glass. The only one that could have gotten it was Treve. And call his name when you do it. And the inbound for Treve, he'll hand it off for Beals, knifing in and unable to finish. Good Today, rebound there um, by Beaton. When he gets there, is is not concentrating fully on the target on the glass as he releases. That's part of your follow through is visually nailing, <laughs> nailing the spot in the glass, burning a hole in the in the glass with your eyes, basically. If you drop your eyes, the ball typically will not go in. Another travel on the catch there for the Griffins, and we get our first substitutions of the game: Elijah Mantley and Nye Johnson in for the Osprey. This young Osprey team, they were at an eight-man rotation this afternoon, but the loss of Peyton Flint, they'll have to dig a little deeper into their bench tonight. As bringing it across half court here is Ryan Newcomb. Now Johnson, he'll put up a deep three, no. Nice rebound there by Treve Jones, and he'll push the pace the other way. Jones, cut off, Johnson now. Defended by Beaton, Johnson. Knife's inside, stops, and is stripped by Beaton, but he traveled. When the Armbray offense runs mainly from the guard slots, the guard alley left and right, and with dribble action with nothing else, they don't tend to do that well <laughs> because the defense is loaded. Quick catch and shoot three for Berglund Simmons, but Mantley is there to clean it up and put two in. And we've talked a little bit about the emergence of Elijah Mantley, the grade nine. Uh, Leslie, tell me a little bit about his game and how he's grown in, in a very short time here. Well, he has definitely grown in height. Um, he's long and lanky. He's a lefty. Um, he has great range on the two point. Um, but, but Elijah also, you know, he, he's smart for a ninth grader. Like, he knows the game. He comes from a basketball family for sure. His dad, Sean, his mom, Rachel. And so he um, knows what's supposed to be happening here for a young player. As Mantley missed that three, you mentioned his father, Sean, a assistant coach on this Armbray team, part of their uh, very experienced and committed coaching staff here. As here comes Ollie Nadeau, nice wraparound, and is fouled on the layup attempt. And Ollie Nadeau, I mean, we, we talked extensively about him this afternoon, but what a player. Yeah, again, you know, the, the Armbray roster, uh, has a lot of talented young kids. Each of them still has areas to grow in their game, as Leslie was saying with regard to Elijah. With Ollie, catch and shoot, he's very, very good. Um, in penetration and transition, he's quite effective. When he has to initiate the penetration from the guard alley against the set D, similar to his teammates, he's, he still struggles with that. Um, but in transition, you'll notice he's very good at getting the angles. Oh, great press break there. Akeem Gray fresh into the game and a quick bucket, and that is a picture-perfect press break, that pass over the top. It wasn't a picture-perfect defense, however. No. Yeah, As JT, I don't think, was too happy with that one. Mantley working out of the corner, back up top for Nadeau. He's defended by Johnson. Now Berglund Simmons, shot clock down to eight. Berglund Simmons, nice inside, flips it up, looking for the foul, no whistle, and Horton pushing the other way. This is Moore. He'll leave it for Johnson. 
Johnson crosses, spins, flips it up and in. Tough take there by Mason Johnson using think, his length. I think this is a little different than what Coach JT and Iron Break coaches have expected. I don't think they expected Horton to push the ball like they've done so far in the first half of the quarter. Um, and they've gotten down the court quite easily, actually. So I think that probably is a big adjustment they're gonna have to make the rest of the game. Well, Horton off to an early 14-9 lead, and Bev, we've talked a lot about the pace when it comes to this Armbray team. We've yeah, seen Millwood speed them up in, in uh, this afternoon's matchup, and uh, you know, it, it was a bit of a, a hate it or love it situation for the Osprey. The key to pace and tempo is who's controlling it. And Armbray's difficult, Armbray at their best, can play up tempo with anybody, moving the basketball, running the floor wide, etc. But when they up their tempo and pace in, in with the other team dictating it, they tend to struggle. Um, I'm having, I can't hear Leslie when you're making your comments for what it's worth. So I'm uh, just, I'm trying hard without the earphones here to hear you. But uh, we'll, we'll continue uh, battling through it. It's not our first time dealing with some audio issues here on true. the broadcast. It's true. It's true. Um, one thing I would add to, to Leslie's comment earlier about Elijah, uh, his mother, Rachel, mm -hmm. is also an excellent basketball coach. Uh, really good basketball mind. So he's kind of, I suspect he gets stereo when he gets home, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, this Horton High Griffins, it, it's my first time seeing them this, this year, but as I mentioned, they are per, perennial provincial contenders in the province. Uh, a, a rich tradition of basketball in that program. I think this year, though, they had quite a transition. They had a lot of grade 12s last year. So my guess is that most of these kids are getting major action for among their first times. Their lineup last year was really senior laden. I will agree with Alan. I mean, this is the first time I've seen Horton play myself this year, and they are big. Like, they look like they're big all the way for every position. As they easily break the Osprey press once again, this is number 13, Jackson Redden, into the game for the first time tonight. Mason Johnson now, bottled up by Jones. Now Redden. And shot clock down to eight. Ryan Newcomb, he'll put up a deep three, and he knocks it down. A trio of first quarter triples already for the Griffins. Ryan, Ryan can regularly hit that shot. He's a kid I've, I've been in the gym a little bit with in groups down the valley. He's a very hard working kid. Um, not primarily a three point shooter, but he can hit it. As Ollie Nadeau responds with a smooth mid range jumper and the lead is down to six. Johnson. He'll leave it for Moore, nice punch dribble to shed the defender, but can't get the triple to draw. Now Nye Johnson coming the other way, leaves his man in the dust, unable to finish, but a foul, as that was an ankle break and move there by Nye Johnson, and we talk about his quickness and penetration abilities. Leslie, what can you say about Nye and his, uh, his talents? Nye has quick feet, he's very smart. Um, I, I had Nye this last summer over at the International Children's Games in England, and uh, he played against some of the top 15 year olds in the world, and he did not disappoint at all. So I'm not surprised by him actually elevating his game actually from then, um, and he's showing very well. As Johnson knocks down the first, the great 11 guard, actually one of the uh, more experienced players on this Armbray team, which is a bit strange to say, but they are a very young team. And they do rely off the quickness and playmaking ability of Johnson. As once again, that press not working so well for the Osprey. Be curious to see how much longer they stick with it, but actually forcing a turnover in their own end. Now Johnson probing, kicking, Mantley, extra pass, nice Nadeau knocks it down. The quick movement of the basketball set up that the rhythm on that, Jay. It's not often that the you see two players on one team with two-point range that are lefties. And there you have Nadeau and uh, Mantley. And, Mantley both. and Renai Beals as well. No, he's not a lefty. No, no. Renai is right-handed. Yeah. As this is But Beals. Elijah and uh, Nadeau. Ollie are both lefties. Yeah. Treve Jones, tough take, and once again, using those steps. One of his better takes that we've seen today. Slowing down his pace, but the easy press break, Akeem Gray coming the other way, using that off arm to shield the ball. That is just way too easy. 
what Armbre has to do, it's a man-to-man -man press, but their angles and spacing, their gapping off of the guy they're guarding is not what it needs to be yet. They've got to make that adjustment, and then those passes will not be as available. But you can see... That Another fast break. Akeem Gray doesn't get that one to drop. He came off the bench and got three quick, easy layups. They're not getting the gap ball side to get in the passing lane, which is why the uh, uh, Horton are breaking it fairly readily. Tough take by Nadeau, and here comes Newcomb downhill. Well done. Extended finish over the shot blocker Jones for the easy two, and the Horton lead is back up to five. Ambre has not figured out uh, what they need to do defensively to, to stop Horton from scoring. They're just at Good will rebound. getting up and down court. <laughs> Eliza rebounded that one from outside the three, but he went and got it. You got to get there if you want. And by the way, Perimeter rebounders offensively are virtually never boxed out. Newcomb now, Armbre in man defense. This is Sam Moore, or sorry, no, that is number five, Mason Johnson, and he's fouled on the drive. Nine may or may not have contact in there, but again, from the referee's point of view, from that angle, he sees the hand go in. He, he you know, too often you're going to hear a whistle. So that's another area where my, Nye can refine his defensive game with those quick hands. As Priotti and uh, Berglund Simmons check back in for the Osprey. Now Newcomb on the drive. Strong take, and he'll head to the line to shoot two. And we've talked uh, at length about Armbray getting in some foul trouble. I believe they were in the penalty in each of the four quarters this afternoon. Yeah, and that's something that, that, that Armbray does on a constant basis. Like, they're so quick when they play, that a lot of times they play with their hands and not necessarily with their feet and get, gets them in foul trouble. And the big problem there, again, is once again the defensive boards. As there's an offensive rebound, and Akeem Gray has put up eight points in about two minutes since coming off the bench, all off easy layups. Ronai Beals, he'll kick it out for Pro Yeti. Now Berglund Simmons, less than a minute remaining in the first quarter. Berglund Simmons puts up the long two, smooth shot there. That was pretty well taken. Ooh. That's the off-arm action there from Newcomb. Fresh into the game, putting up a three there was Jesse Davison. Another offensive rebound for the Griffins. Unable to capitalize on the second chance opportunity. Jones looking to outlet for Mantley. He'll catch up to it. Now Jones gets it back, top of the key. He'll drive, kick. Ronai Beals, no good. And Newcomb steals the rebound away. 18 seconds remaining in the quarter. Shot clock is off. This is beaten. And that is deflected out of bounds. Will remain Horton basketball and Will Stewart. You know, with no Peyton Flint, Will Stewart's going to have to step up and, and do a little more inside. He is definitely going to have get, gonna get his name called today, and he needs to be able to give, give a few minutes there. As under 10 remaining, Newcomb puts up a three, no, and that is out of bounds. And we talked a lot this afternoon about holding for the last shot. Horton elected not we to did, do so didn't there. We? Yes. So five and a half seconds here, and it will be the Osprey <coughs> who get the last shot. Well, Newcomb swallowed that one up, and that is it for the first quarter. A fun, competitive first quarter, and Horton takes a four-point lead. Leslie, your impressions of the first quarter, and what do you think Coach JT, I know you know his coaching well, what do you think he's talking about in the huddle here? Well, I'm not exactly sure. I thought it was even going to be this close at the end of the first quarter, the way Horton started off. But Armbray did rebound a little bit and get themselves back in the game. But I think Coach JT is definitely talking to, talk to his players about getting back on defense, being in the right positions. Um, taking away the easy passes and the easy baskets that they're giving up on Horton. Bev, curious, you know, defensively we saw that that full court press, full court man. Uh, Horton seemed to have that one figured out, and it led to lots of easy baskets. Yeah, would, again, would you I, expect Armbray to come back in that? Well, look? again, it, part of it is can you make adjustments and begin to actually execute within the press, because their angles and spacing were really set up in you know such a way that Horton was able to break it easily without really feeling much pressure. So can Armbray kind of cheat off and cheat over a little bit 
to take away some of the easy passing lanes and then see if they could actually get some Im you know impact defensively out of that man-to-man -man press. Alternatively, you get out of it or whatever. Interestingly enough, though, Les, I'm not sure what you think, but I felt Horton significantly outplayed Armbray that quarter, but exactly. it's a four-point game. Exactly. I'm yeah. totally surprised that it's only a four-point game the way that Horton played and the intensity that they came out and played with. Um, but again, like I said, Armbray figured something out and got themselves back in the game now, so we'll see what they can do with that. Right now, the very high point total for the quarter for Horton is largely due to Armbray's ineffectiveness with the extended D. Yes. So maybe you compress a little bit, take some lanes their way down here and see what happens. Make them have to play against D more. Yes. Because <laughs> most of the stuff there was either one on O or one on one yep. at most in transition with no help. Some great analysis of two very experienced people in the local basketball scene. The Hall of Famer Bev Greenlaw and Coach Leslie States. As we get set to begin the second quarter, a reminder, we'd like to thank our gold sponsors, Leeway Marine and Zach the Builder, for sponsoring this fantastic weekend of basketball, the 2023 Ospreys Winter Classic. Looks like Armbre off in a 2-3 zone to begin this second quarter, and Akeem Gray, the hot hand off the bench, that's 10 points for him. He is definitely feeling it this evening. Showing some range that time after knocking down a bunch of layups, and it's funny how basketball will do that for you. You see the easy ones go down, and you start to feel a little more confidence in your range. Pro Yeti yeah. triple, no. Well, he benefited from the, from the matchups in the press, actually. That was most of his early points were because of where he was in the press break. He was the <laughs> fortunate recipient of some easy opportunities, but that one legit, right? Not, not that the others weren't, but <laughs> they were a little too easy. As the Osprey meet them at half court and Newcomb easily sheds the defender. Gray, now a three from the corner, doesn't get it to drop. Rendell with the rebound. And a fresh 14 for the Griffins. Now Gray calls for the screen, spins. Nice. And I believe he traveled, yes. Look good. Okay. <laughs> might, might be getting a little too happy right now. Yeah. <laughs> Keem Gray says, I got 10 points. I'm going to show off my whole bag right now on one move. But uh, just one extra shuffle of the pivot foot. Now Pro Yeti around the Stewart screen. Beals. Gobbled up easily there by number 13, Jackson Redden. Now Redden spinning in the lane. And it's fouled. Notice again, that drive was initiated from the guard alley against Stack D. Uh, Armbre, thus far this season, when I've seen them, Leslie, you give us your view, but I've not seen a lot of success consistently from that initiating move from the guard alley against Stack D. Yeah, Armbre really needs to start moving the ball more. They need to start getting open. Um, they need to find that open alley, that open lane in order to attack and kick if that's what their goal is. But they haven't actually uh, had that happen yet where they've gotten into the key and that's been an impact for them. As Jackson Redden knocks down both free throws, lead is up to seven, 29, 20, or sorry, it's 30, 22. Yeah, Gray's two minute, uh, 28. Okay, there's an opportunity. Mantley kicks to the corner and <coughs> Nadeau too ahead of himself on that catch. Yeah. Got a little too excited when the defensive player gambled and lost. Uh, As Mason Johnson, the tall guard, brings it up court for Horton. Now Davison into the corner for Gray. Post touch here for Beaton. Big body and Noah Beaton. Able to finish right over Will Stewart. If they consistently get it to Beaton in that situation, they're going to have to bring a double because he's he's going to physically win that battle, I think, most times. Pro Yeti, catch at the free throw line extended. Hands it off for Nadeau around the Stewart screen. Kick out to the corner. Good Manly low. open. Nope. Too strong. Gray. Good action that time, though. Got a good look. Now to have some rebounders, though. And Ray hasn't had any rebounders so far this quarter, and that's... That's been a part of the and one and done. Right on cue, Treve Jones coming back into the game, likely to handle that rebounding duties as they're looking to get it into the beaten at the post. Gray, count it, and one. Akeem Gray 
takes a bump and he's headed to the line for a chance at three the old fashioned way. That is a tough move there. I mean, he, had, he was on balance. Even if it looked like he thought he had the ball in his hand, he was secure. Um, you know, a lot of players at this at the high school level, they're dual sport athletes. And I know Keen's family quite well, and he's a, a rookie guard, a rookie football player at Horton this year and was like, got many accolades uh, for rookie of the year and things in the league. So he's definitely a solid, a solid athlete. Uh, for many sports. Gray, no good on the free throw, but again, an offensive rebound off the missed free throw for the Griffins. And their lead is up to 12 here. As this is Johnson from the left wing. Gray, top of the key, he'll drive, takes a bump, doesn't get the roll. Jones playing volleyball and Nadeau comes away with it. Nadeau now to his left hand and Fouled, he'll head the line to shoot two. That takedown here by Gray was a pretty good example of what you're talking about too, Les. Took it strong, took it low. Good, great thing about football kids is they love the contact. Oh, they love contact. <laughs> you know, they're fearless, right? Yeah, they love contact, they don't care. Well, I don't know if Ollie Nadeau's played much football, but the way he drives the ball today, and, and that time going essentially one on four in, in transition, shows a lot of confidence for a young guard. Well, yeah, again, sure. I think in transition is his best penetrating, uh, his best penetrating action thus far this season tends to have come from transition. And again, he's got soft touch. He's got to learn a few things about what to do to get there, but he's got soft touch when he gets there. Uh -oh. As the silky lefty knocks down two, and the Osprey caught a break there as the press was broken easily, but Newcomb, or beaten rather, shuffles his feet on the catch. Their difficulties, aside from the alignments and the gap or whatever, they're not getting rotation on the, on the defensive side to get the, to cover the deep when the ball swings one way. That's kind of been a major ongoing problem. Un Nadeau. Unlucky. Nadeau lost it on the way up as into the game for the first time today is Cale Brown. Trevay Jones, baseline jumper blocked by Beaton. Inadvertent reset on the shot clock as we've seen a couple times today, Ooh. and Nadeau unable to capitalize. As Palmer, post entry for Beaton. Good hands up D by Jones, but I, I believe it was Berglund Simmons from behind. Jones had good defensive positioning to me. No, yes, it was oh, Berglund, Berglund Simmons. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's on yeah. Trevay. No, it's against oh. Berglund Simmons. Oh, okay, I thought the, I the, that, It's fist five for 15. Ah, uh, okay. You know, six. Yeah, you just never know whether it's a 15 or a six. Well, it's, it's fist five versus uh, one okay, five. Okay, no, that's helpful. Good. Yeah. Funny, at Sacred Heart this year, we have new basketball jerseys, and we got numbers one to 18. But 16, 17, and 18 are not FIBA legal basketball numbers no, because not. you cannot signal them on one hand. No, not in FIBA. Okay. No. That's right. That's Kale yeah, Brown. 15, right? Kale Brown on the drive, and he's fouled. We'll head to the line to shoot two, and... You know, we, we talk about the bench of Aaron Bray. Leslie, what, what can you tell me about Cale Brown here? I actually haven't seen Cale play very much, um, but he seems like when he gets in, he takes advantage of the time that he's given. Um, and that's what I think coaches want from players that are that are not normally on the court as much as, as normally regular players. Like, just take the time that you're given, do, what you, do what's within yourself, and then things will, things will work out fine for you. And again, that's what he did here. He got himself to the line, which is what the coach wants. As Brown able to sneak in one of two free throws. And again, our Horton did, was not set up for their press break, but an easy break leads to an open three the other way. And another second chance opportunity for the Griffins. Armbury's got some things to tidy up here as the shot clock was not reset. The one thing that I notice about Horton, which I've noticed for years watching them play both guys and girls, is their patience mm. and how they are really skilled and they just take time to run and do what's off, asking them of the coaching staff. Um, a lot of it is not pretty, a lot of it is not fancy, it's just fundamental basketball and they do it really well. And we're seeing that today because they are just making crisp passes, they're moving to open spaces, they're finding the open players. Johnson on the drive. Oh, and he twisted his ankle on the landing. And you don't like to see that. Not at all. 
I don't know if it's wet, damp on the end line, but yeah, his, he came off that layout. I think it was a little slippery and then he jammed it underneath mm -hmm. the, yeah. Looks like he's going to walk it off, which is good to see. Again, yeah. we saw a, a very tough injury uh, this afternoon, and, and you know, we've talked about it this morning, but or this afternoon rather, a lot of games this weekend, three straight weekends at tournaments for the, the uh, Osprey, I know. They've played a lot of games already this season. Yeah, yeah, a lot of basketball. A lot of basketball this year, they were, they were in the... Um, in the Grammar Classic, then they were in Montreal. The case tournament. At the case tournament, and now they're back here for their own tournament. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you want to make sure that with all the basketball being played, that you're trying to make sure that all the athletes are staying as healthy as possible. Um, and Iron Bray always has um, physiotherapy on site for all their games. So if there's any players from either team that are injured, then, then they take care of that. Um, and I know they greatly appreciate XL physiotherapy that are here um, for all of their home games. Notice both teams with uh, just 10 players dressed tonight. You, we talked about Peyton Flint, Dion Coward also out for the Osprey uh, with a, an injured foot. So, you know, it's uh, each of it's all a war the of attrition. I have uh, sprained their ankles uh, at times recently. Yeah, Dion's Dion supposed to be open until uh, January, from what I hear. So, I mean, that's a big loss for them. That's a big loss for to have him on the bench so early in the season and be out for almost the whole season and then, you know, try to get yourself back in groove, um, you know, late as the second half season starts. So, we wish him well. Well, and, you know, you, you love to win these tournaments and, and get a lot of reps in November and December, but ultimately it's it's merch, wh which uh, matters right. if, you're, if your goal is to raise a provincial banner, which I know both these teams here tonight, uh, that is their ultimate goal. So Most definitely. Yeah. And uh, do you know either of you much about what uh, Horton's schedule has been thus far? I, I don't. I know they were in the city a couple weeks ago for some exhibition games. I know they're a CEC, I think for an exhibition game, but I'm not exactly sure if they've been to tournaments of any kind. I'll see what I can find out. I know their girls team has been, they, they won the Leo Hayes tournament a weekend or two ago. And last night they handled Parkview quite easily in their league. They were supposed to host KES uh, the blizzard night there and that got canceled. But. And the girls team is actually hosting their own tournament this weekend at Horton. That's true too, yeah. I know Armbray's girls are at a tournament in Moncton this weekend. They're in Moncton at the big Moncton, uh, I don't know, they renamed it again, but like the big Moncton Classic. Uh, Auburn is also up there at this that tournament. This tournament season as Nadeau met above the rim there by Johnson. That's an interesting matchup. Two long, smooth guards. And right back the other way comes Declan Palmer for the easy two. I know Horton was in the Citadel tournament two weeks ago. Shout out to Tyler Deacon uh, of Maritime Athletic Profiles giving me that info. And a great drive to the hoop there by, by Ronai Beals. And he is just so smooth with his drives. Really a, a skill that you could see, you know, he can instantly do that, provide that at any level of basketball. Well, Bev and I were talking about Renai a couple games ago on how much we've noticed his development and how even he stretched out really long, but just his decision making and the way he attacks with confidence is, is really um, expanded since last season. As kick out now, Beals right on cue, unable to get it to go. Extra rebound there by Brown and a foul on the drive. Really good look though by nice team action. Even though it didn't go in, it was a good shot opportunity as evidenced by the fact that uh, the Kale Brown Kale Brown <laughs> got the rebound uh, swooping in uncontested literally again from the perimeter but when your first shot comes from the team action and is a good choice your chances of getting old boards are much better yeah I love that drive and kick by Nadeau tough thing to do it, out of a spin move rather than rising up for the shot, able to it's one of the understand it's fine, actually fine quite player. well yeah. is get in there and pivot some often in midair and be under control and find teammates. As Beal splits a pair of free throws, lead is down to 13. Johnson from the left wing. And by Nadeau, Johnson crosses. 
Just didn't get the roll, but that's another strong Matt, take. I'm impressed Matt by Lee Mason Johnson. has to Johnson. step up on that one. He stayed down, more worried about getting the rebound as he did about stopping the shot. Berglund Simmons unable to finish down low. Turnover there in the backcourt by Newcomb. Fields. Nice step through. Flat pass, bad angle, off balance. And Horton has seen enough. They're going to call a timeout, a couple of backcourt turnovers, and you know, we, we've talked a lot about uh, the game, the momentum of the game of basketball. They don't want to see a huge, mo the momentum has already shifted. They don't want to see a huge run here. No, uh, not at all. Momentum change. Horton has essentially controlled the game thus far. And what they don't want to do is change that script. They don't want to enable Armbray to get a little bit of a run of, say, but eight points so or so on and, and uh, really change the script. I think all three of us are, are impressed by what we've seen in terms of team basketball out of this Horton High team. And, you know, going back, in, I know you can go back a little further than I can, but in recent years we've seen some fantastic players. Uh, Braden McVicker, now Coastal Carolina University. Key Van Vino, uh, all Canadian, now playing professionally in Netherlands, come out of this Horton High program. Um, but it's it's the team dynamic and and you're right that all their teams play a, a certain way that's really entertaining basketball to watch yeah they do both guys and girls it's almost like the coaching staffs of both programs have a conversation it's like okay this is what we do this is how we play this is this is who horton is and everybody seems to have bought into that um and 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 they're a pleasure to watch both guys and girls well it's it's interesting there and there have been turnovers in the coaching yeah. at horton over the years too that's but right. uh the valley has a lot of very good uh, athletically experienced people coaching basketball for both genders. Um, there's a lot of very good developmental coaching going on in the Valley. Because you see Horton mainly at the D1 level, but their D2 schools, there are an abundance of good, good D2 schools in the Valley. Well, on the women's side, I should mention uh, Haley McDonald, one of the top players, uh, female players in the region in a long time. I know both of you probably know her well, but Haley, uh, I, I know, has gone back and assisted the Horton program. Hey, she I she was there last going. year. I don't know if she's there again. I this think she's year? with Acadia now. Yeah, she's with Acadia what now. She's Haley she's McDonald. She's assistant coach in Acadia this yeah. year. But uh, Haley and Jada and I have spent quite a bit of time when <laughs> in their childhood in gymnasiums. Um, Haley was actually the poster child in the first solely girls camp that we initiated at Acadia back oh. in whenever that was. She was 10. <laughs> no, it's, and, and Jay Davino as well, uh, yeah. another AUS MVP, former teammate of hers, now in her fifth year at UMB. Having a great season for the nationally ranked Reds. So 44-31 is our score, 330 remaining in the first half. Horton in control. As this is John or uh, Palmer, he'll kick it out for Newcomb and Ryan Newcomb hits another corner triple. He's having himself a night. Yeah, Newcomb's just noted. He's just recognizing the end of the end of that hoop, and he's just putting that ball up there. Nothing but that. Proietti now not much doing for the Armbre offense. Nadeau will force up a straightaway triple. Mantley secures the second chance opportunity. Now Beals, looking to break down his man. Out for Mantley, back for Beals. Three from the left wing, no. Nadeau, third chance, spinning, unable to finish. Nice battle for the boards there. Johnson, great pass in transition, and finished above the rim there by number four, Moore, Sam Moore. I think, yeah. Compare the cleanness, cleanness mm -hmm. of the possessions here. Uh, and the scoreboard becomes somewhat self-explanatory. I think you see Horton, and they're actually scoring in f in motion of what they're looking to do. They're not they're not rushing anything. They're moving the ball. They're finding the open player. As compared to Armbre, they're putting up shots when they think they're open and not well, actually looking for the open player. And and as antecedent to that, count the number of dribbles per individual within each possession for each team. And you're gonna find a dramatically different count. And they're not dribbles that are penetrating or breaking right. down deep. They're just, the ball is bouncing on the floor, which makes the defense a lot easier. 
that transition, for example, did they dribble it once? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that they did. No, exactly. Um, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of Horton's possessions are it's, that's what I mean people by moving really it's, well it's in open spaces. The and ball finding is moving. The people are moving. Yes. Very difficult to defend that. Armbre at their best are beginning to play that way more frequently. Mm -hmm. They're not tonight. They're they're struggling. Now again, they played earlier today against a very tough, uh, you know, physical and and uh, talented team. Uh, they are young. <laughs> they may very, and they've been playing a lot of games. They may very well be showing the effects of that. Both these teams will be in action again tomorrow. Just looking ahead, Armbre takes on Kennebecasis Valley at 8 p.m. Horton and Millwood at 6 p.m. Bev, that should be an interesting one. That should be a good game. As Nadeau kicks it out for Beal. Shot clock down to eight. Nadeau working out of the corner. Got to get going. Five on the clock. Nowhere to go with it. Fades away. Draws iron and Beals, not boxed out, puts it up and in for the easy two. Newcomb now, dishes to Johnson, corner triple, oh my. I'll tell you, Mason Johnson and Ryan Newcomb are carrying Horton in this first half. Mason Johnson just wanted Renai Beals to know that I just knocked that down. He gave him a quick little look, <laughs> just as if to say, see me. As Horton also are playing, part of momentum is, is flow and yep. confidence, and Horton right now are playing with a lot of confidence. A lot of confidence. If, if Armbre can find a way to change the script, make getting a good first shot more difficult for Horton, then the, the pressure and tension on each individual player taking a shot becomes greater. And uh, usually the, the, you'll see the difference in percentages. Right now they're feeling very free and open and flowing. The ball's moving, they're moving, and uh, the shots are dropping. It's Nye Johnson on the line. And I'll tell you this, I don't have the stats in front of you, but Armbray's left a lot of points on the line tonight. A lot of points. They've either gone 1 for 2 or 0 oh for 2. Yeah. I don't think I've seen anybody go 2 for 2 from the line tonight. Ha yeah. Hasn't been a, a consistent problem for, for them from what we've seen so far, but again, Played last night, played this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're not sharp th yeah. this evening for whatever combo of reasons. Um, and they are struggling, and they got down, you know, they the first quarter they got outplayed but didn't get down that much. Right. But then this quarter has, has been mostly Horton. And, uh, <coughs> and again, like you say, three games in less than 24 hours is tough on any team at any level. Um, so, Absolutely, and it's the legs that go first, and that'll affect your free throws. Johnson now. Shot clock down to eight. Newcomb. Post touch here for Beaton, and called for three in the key. He's, he's been able to spend a fair amount of time in there, and uh, when they choose to call it is always of interest. <laughs> yes, I, I agree. Nadeau. Oh, he got to know he's a lefty. That is that's tough. A nice, that's but a tough shot. They had they were forcing him left. He's gonna take that every time. Yeah. Johnson. He still that was a difficult finish though, and he did it well. Most certainly, that's Johnson. Walk. Extra step and Paul De Bailey's all over that one. So you know th those two possessions are are interesting. Um, now we'll see what Armbre does with their offensive possession this time, and then depending on that, how Horton responds, because this could, it, they're running out of time in this half, but it could signal a little bit of a shift in Mo. They've gone from 19 down to 15 down with under a minute left in the first half, so we'll see if they can get a good possession here. Nadeau, again, shot clock down to 12. Nadeau pulls up into the 20 footer, and that is smooth as butter. He got a mismatch against the defender up top, and he took advantage of it very effectively. Ali Nadeau having himself a nice first half. Likely the leading scorer for the Osprey. Armbrey needs a big stop here. And yeah, beaten with good happen. post possession. Remember Probably what I said earlier about you've got to bring the double. He's going to win yeah. that yes. physical uh, match Against Berglund Simmons, he's probably got five the inches. Defender is. Yeah. And again, these are interesting times. No Trevay Jones on the court. Peyton Flint out, Will Stewart not in the game. Armbrey quite small as Nadeau puts up the three. No, 10 seconds remaining. Horton can take the last shot. Johnson ahead for Newcomb. Newcomb, no, oh, second that chance. And a foul, the point three seconds. This is only foul. a guess, but I'm guessing that Beaton's dad is a uh, former Acadia Axeman and pro football player. Bruce? 
Uh, Bruce yeah, Beaton, uh, Hall yeah, of Famer. Yeah. I, I don't have the facts, but it's uh Because I think he's back in the area now, okay. and this, he'd be about the right age. And, you know, physically, he certainly could be <laughs> descended from the Beaton clan, kind of that Beaton clan. It's Frank Olton on the line. Goes one of two, and with .3 seconds left, I don't think is going to get a shot off. Well, but then base that's still the ball. Ah, uh, the clock started before he touched. That's referees are not going to correct it apparently. Still, with he point, waited. With point three, what are you going to do? Well, yeah, <laughs> but but he do, waited do to give himself optimal opportunity, but the clock started before he touched. <laughs> All right, as we get set to uh, step aside and show you some highlights here on Maritime Athletic Profiles, really quickly, Leslie, uh, I mean, your thoughts on the first half and what Armbre has to do to trailing by 16 to, to make a game of this in the second half. I think Armbre really does have to pick up their defense and recognize what's going on on the court. They're playing man-on-man -on -man defense, but nobody's playing off of the, the initial play. So nobody's on help. Nobody is stepping in. Nobody is doing anything as in a team collective for the bass on defense. So I think they really need to tighten that up um, and support each other. Because right now, um, they're, just, they're just sort of letting Horton do what they want to do and dictate how the game's going to go. They had a little bit of a run there and settled down for a little bit. Um, but then again, Horton just turned around and, and regathered themselves, and they went on a, on a bit of a run again. So. I think um, Armbre definitely has to work on that team collective um, for defense. Coach Bev, you want a, a crack at it? Or maybe a, a, a slightly different, but maybe the same question. What do you like about what Horton did in that first half? I'd like to pick up off a, a Okay, sure. Thing. Yeah, okay. go for it. Yeah. Um, the, um, and it sort of will answer your question, yeah. too. Horton did most of what they did offensively very effectively. Leslie's point is a part of that because it, it, a large part of that actually. The quality of Horton's first shots was far superior to the quality of Armbray's first shots because of what led to it and because of what Horton, uh, Armbray was unable to do defensively to, to alter that circumstance. And we've talked, uh, and we'll keep talking about it until it changes, about the struggle that Armbray has rebounding defensively. I would add to it that offensively, Armbray has got to, and I know they're working on this, but they've got to continue to alter the way they attack, particularly in the quarter court. Horton has been defended effectively thus far, but it's been easy to defend against because of the lack of player and ball movement. If we look back at the earlier game this today, the way Armbray began that game against Millwood, who are very quick, good, defensive, whatever, you know, they're, they're a good team. Armbray came out and moved themselves and the basketball using more of the court far more effectively, and they got a lead based on that. They then kind of reverted to some of their, their more deeply ingrained habits, which, again, they're young player, young team habits and they don't work really well against teams that play well. So against in this game, I, I suspect that the, the game earlier today has taken a fair amount out of them physically, which of course takes something out of you mentally. So the discipline, which is just being ingrained offensively by the coaching staff, and is going to take probably another six weeks, really, to make it habitual, um, it is not there, and with the tiredness, everything compounds. And then Horton playing so well in transition uh, just absolutely compounded it. So, yeah, there you go. Well, some amazing analysis there by uh, some very experienced Maritime basketball minds, and we'd like to thank the experienced crew from Maritime Athletic Profiles, producer Dylan and camera operator Spencer, bringing you all the great quality. We're going to step aside here. The Horton High Griffins lead the Armbray Ospreys 55-39. We'll be right back with the second half on Maritime Athletic Profiles.
Your gifts directly contribute to real, tangible change on our campus and will immediately impact all of our students. With your support, we can expand our programs and fund enhancements to our classrooms and co-curricular learning experiences. Your gift, no matter the size, can make a difference. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thanks to your generosity, we were able to outfit our science lab with state-of-the-art microscopes. When we pool our resources together, we can make a significant impact on the armory experience for our students. All gifts, regardless of size, have the power to inspire. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. At Armbre, the annual fund campaign is really the backbone of our fundraising efforts. That's because the projects are designed to enhance the learning of current students. So we conceive of and raise funds for the project this year, for example, and then we launch it next year. In the past, you've supported projects like smart board upgrades in classrooms, classroom furniture upgrades, playground equipment, uh, the new class set of microscopes in the science lab, and of course the new bike shelter that's being built this week. So thank you for your support of those projects. Like all independent schools, tuition fees only cover about 85% of our operating costs. So it's through the generosity of donors like yourselves that we're able to bridge that gap. This year's projects include um, musical instruments, visual art equipment, and smart board upgrades across all divisions, and of course our scholarship and bursary fund as well. In the coming weeks and months, you'll be given opportunities to support the project or projects of your choice. And I just wanted to take a moment here to thank you in advance for doing so. Thank you for your support. 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 Thank you for your support.
test, test. Can you two hear each other? I can. I could hear you. Great. How okay. about that? Yes. And, and we're back. Everybody's happy. Bev and Leslie can hear each other. <laughs> Al and April in the middle. I can't hear myself, but that's okay. I can hear you guys. So we're back here. 55-39 is the score. Horton High, maybe a bit of a surprise coming in here and controlling this game against the Armbray Osprey. As we get set to begin the second half, Ronai Beals. Now Pro Yeti drives and dishes for Nadeau. Jalen Berglund Simmons, shot clock down to 12, spinning, stepping back and knocking it down. Tough take there by Berglund Simmons. Stayed down and was patient. 2-2-1. Two, two, Ambrose coming out with a little bit of a press to see if they can get anything, any stops out of that. But that is easily broken by the Griffins as they have done all night and driving and losing the handle. In that 2-2-1, two, two, what Armbray has to do is uh, uh, the help side second row guy has to take away the middle. Yes, that time they right. didn't. That's right. As Nadeau now dribbles into the handoff action for Berglund Simmons. More handoff as Nadeau now isolated at the top of the key. Beals, shot clock down to 12. Berglund Simmons, triple. Doesn't get it to go, Jones right over his defender, and he's fouled. And the defender asking for an over the back foul. No, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. asking, but the, neglecting the physics of the links. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Which I suspect one of the referees is pointing out to <laughs> Like, son? <laughs> yeah, there the was actually no contact at all. He just went straight up over top of him and got the rebound. I'd also like to see Armbre utilize him more in the second half. They didn't actually have any kind of focus to put it into the into the middle to see if he could do anything. I, th I think that's something that the the perimeter guys are still learning how to do appropriately is to use him and in terms of feeding the post. It's yes, a, it's a skill. But the other thing is, if they get complete reversal earlier in the possession, it becomes easier to feed the post. As Jones makes a pair of free throws, and here come oh, the Griffins, nice stolen away by Beals. Great steal. Sometimes even when you break that initial press, you're able to uh, get a turnover in the half court, and Beals capitalized there. Well, they got him pinned to the sideline, and then he gapped it, right? The, line, the sidelines are to be avoided, and I know if you can avoid it. Beals drives and kicks, Pro That's Yeti knocks down the triple. Much better offensive rhythm coming out of the defensive pressure right now for Armbre. And that's what Armbre needs is some of the unsung heroes to actually score the basketball for them. And another steal off the full court pressure by Ronai Beals and he is starting to take over a little bit in this third quarter and just like that, the Osprey have it down to a single digit. Really like the positive energy he's shown so far this quarter. And again, third quarter, is it, that first few minutes is big. It's, huge, it's crucial. You know, maybe that three gives uh, Proetti a little bit of confidence to uh, get involved in the offense. So that's great to see for him to hit that shot. Sam tends to pick his spots, but uh, again, he's, he's pretty reliable on a percentage basis, you know? Yeah. He knocked down a pair of threes this afternoon, and I believe he had a two as well, knocked down a couple threes this afternoon. And I think, uh, you know, we, we talk a little bit about their depth. If, if he can step up and provide them some quality minutes, it helps ease the burden for everybody else. As Ronai Beals on the free throw line now to shoot two. Gets the friendly roll. Needs a little more lift. That it, sometimes when I gets a little bit too flat in his release, but the better the second one was better. They hit two at the at the right time. Those earlier that wasn't happening. So, so definitely momentum change. We're into a seven point game. Nine oh run. Nice trap. Half. And now Newcomb bottled up, able to get it away for Beaton. Beaton pushes it down low. Extra pass open. Top of the key is Moore. Can't get it to go, Gray crashing. Armbre are also visibly working harder to actually physically be a presence on the defensive boards. Box out, get in the path, et cetera, it's visible. And I, th I think that's something that, that the coaching staff definitely stressed at halftime. Is <laughs> the way they get, the only way to get back in the game is to be physical and, be, and make a presence on the court, on the boards. Yep, and, and they're responding so far. Most definitely. Berglund That's Simmons a tough shot. Puts up a contested two, doesn't get it to drop. And Moore pushing the other uh -huh. way, but it's stolen away by Berglund. Oh, Simmons. nice. 
Now Beals in transition, steps through and finishes. What Jalen did on that pass, remember I talked about touch and pass? He took something off the pass and just sort of softly put it there so only Renai could get it. Just let him right to the hoop. Yeah. Johnson misses the three. Rebound deflected in the hands of Jones. Here comes Beals. Kicks it out. Nadeau, triple, knocks it down. Wow. And it is, I was it is now a game. Wondering when the timeout was going it to get called. It is now a game, most definitely. That is a 14-0 run to open the second half by the Osprey. And whatever Coach John Tramble said in the locker room obviously took effect. The Osprey playing like a whole new team to start this third quarter. You know, it's an inch, there's a lot of axioms in everything, I suppose. But in basketball, one of the, the things about a, a double-digit lead at halftime, no matter how hard the coach may try to not allow the players to fall into a low, it's very, very difficult. Humans do what humans do. They get complacent very quickly. And we've just seen an example of that. I don't know when, what went on in the Horton locker room, but we can, we can, Leslie's already pointed out a couple of things that definitely with urgency were communicated in the Armbray locker room. Whatever was being communicated in the Horton locker room, did the players receive the urgency of the communication? My guess is not quite in the same mindset as the Armbray kids did. That double digit gap can really affect the, re the reception of the message. And I'm not sure if Peyton Flynn is the, uh, the X factor here at all, even though he's not on court. They've moved him, he's actually in the gym, so they've moved him from further away by the door, right over beside his team bench, where he's over there cheering for them now. So I think maybe just having him around, having that energy has given them a little bit of a spark. Yep. It's, uh, we have an offensive foul on the screen by Beaton. Yeah. Nothing going the Griffins' way right now. It's similar, I was going to say earlier, Les, when you're con uh, commenting about Dion. Dion's done a really good job of being a teammate. He has. He has done a hurt. great job. He's been really cheering and up and talking to the pl his players as they come off the bench, off the floor. So. Good. Better patience. As Johnson kicks it out for Berglund Simmons, around the horn for Beals. Jones brings the high ball screen, great dish, and Jones finishes Remember, we ball. talked this afternoon about when you set that ball screen clearing two meters, he did it, and he got found because he was far enough away to find them. And, and a steal. with the steal and the acrobatic finish, and the Osprey have the lead for the first time all night, 57-55. It's an 18-0 Osprey run. And there's Jones another steal. Another steal. Oh. Got and a steal from the steal. But Four another steal. And a steal from the steal from the steal. <laughs> will come away with it. This pitch Patience. is really favoring the Osprey right now as Johnson able to Move the ball. keep it away from the defender. Now Beals on the right wing. He's the hot hand. He'll make the extra pass for Berglund Simmons. Shot clock down to 10. Nadeau thought about it. They still have a few. They still extra have some time. Pass. They still have some time. Johnson. Gets downhill, flips it up, doesn't get the roll. Newcomb secures the rebound, but a nice offensive possession Horton there by the Osprey. five on four. As Nye Beaten takes his now time down down court. Stripped by Berglund Simmons. Jones, headmans for Beals. Nice into the lane, takes a bump and gets it to go. Renai Beals has put Armbray on his shoulders this, this quarter, and he has just taken over. And another steal by Treve Jones. The wheels are off the wagon for the Griffins. They just can't get the ball across half court right now. We'd like to have seen them drop that one off to Renai actually. Once yeah, he, he was the right defender. there for sure. But, but, it, but the, the Armbre buzzing have put themselves on one another's shoulders. Most the definitely. ball is moving, the players are moving, the quickness, the pace, everything is it's kind of, we did not see this in the first half. And, oh, I, and, and I we did see them applying full court pressure in that first half, but this, I don't know if it's a, a different form of press, but. It's a 2-2-1 two, two, yeah. matchup, matching the, the gap. And again, the, the second row guy offside has to move into the middle to sort of overload the, the, and narrow the court. And they're, they're doing that. But the other thing they're doing, because there's a lot of, again, back to the hand and foot quickness, they're playing with energy and urgency in their gap shooting. Now, even on that one, Nadeau should have had that because that was right there. Beaten, blocked by Jones, and Trevay Jones is a monster on the defensive end right now. Nadeau 
will hand it off for Johnson. Ooh, crosses over, nice crossover. it up, doesn't get the, to drop. Beaton, the big man, pushing it the other way. Moore, up top for Newcomb. Around the horn, great ball movement. Leads it's to an open three off. from Johnson. Nice not even close. Nice lead there. Good outlet there, and it's Beals. And remember what we said in the first half about how the tension factor would affect the offensive player if the pressure got better? Guess what? Now that one was nicely done. Newcomb finally stops the bleeding five minutes into this third quarter, and that is the first hoop of the frame for the Griffins. Cuts yeah, they the needed that. Game. Jones. But he took his time and used the open look to well instead of rushing with the tension. Beaton wins that rebound, and that's a foul 90 feet away from the basket by Trevay Jones. The foul that every coach hates to see. Yep. <laughs> I'll tell you this, another thing in the uh, Osprey advantage, Horton already in the penalty in this third quarter. Yeah, and that's going to pay, pay dividends for Armbray as long as they keep attacking. They'll go to the foul line, but then the Achilles heel is actually making the foul shots when you get to the foul line. So this 2-2-1 two, 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 press, and that time Moore finds the gap on the left wing, but is blocked again by Jones. I don't know if Jones is getting the credit for all these, but he is altering every shot and making some steals. He's an impact presence in the defensive end around there, without question. Johnson now, working the two-man game with Jones. Johnson. That's too difficult. No, we'd like to see Nye kick that. He's got several options. And if he kicks and they get pass, 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 somebody else is gonna get a real good drive. Yeah, they got to get the ball moving again. They, that's, that was what made them successful coming into the third quarter. Count the number of dribbles that were involved in all those transition baskets. You don't have to count very high. Moore with a nice move. Doesn't get the lefty lane to go, Needs but help secures on the, board the on second chance opportunity. Newcomb straight away three, no. And Berglund Simmons corrals the rebound. What Armbray can't allow themselves to do is get back into the thing that Walt Treve will clear every board for us. They've got to be in there to help. Nice, that's a nice pass, a nice kick by Renai Beals. And that's what he's added to his game this year. Renai has become a very good passer. Even though he had the ability last year, I don't think he had, mat had the maturity. And he's actually learned that this year. I agree. Beaton knocks in the 12-foot baseline jumper. Nice range there from the big man. But it's a 25-5 Osprey lead, or Osprey run in this third quarter. Another foul on Johnson in the backcourt. As Mantley will check Take in. Take was good, Johnson finish not there, trouble. and then compounded thing by fouling. Um, again. Pay attention to what is happening when you do stuff. What is the result? What might we need to change? As Beaton now working out of the left wing, he'll drive, floats it up and in. Right over top there. So cuts it to a two point Osprey advantage, but this third quarter has been all arm break. Antley, triple. Coming no off, off the off bench and putting up the three. Moore brings it across half. Mm -hmm. Nadeau back on his heels. Now Newcomb bobbled it. Looks to drive middle. Kicks it out for Gray. Grant, head down and he's blocked by Trevay Jones. Gray had his head down trying to get to the right side and Jones just erased the attempt the, over The now. general team defense on that was good. They made Horton work very hard even for that attempt. And seven seconds now to see what happens next. As Cale Brown checks back in for the Osprey. Moore. Beautiful Help ran there. away there, chased away. The kid is obviously getting ready to try for that. Stay and help. Moore did a nice job there getting the seal and using his back to protect against the shot blocker Jones. Finish on the left side. Nadeau now, all tied up at 64, two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Berglund Simmons is fouled yeah. on the drive by... Uh, yeah, he got, bail he got bailed out there because he had Redden. nowhere to go. And with Horton in the penalty, 
Berglund Simmons will be on the line to shoot too. Foul against Jackson Redden. Stay on the line. Yeah, yeah. To make the free throws, you've got to have kind of one foot through which you rise and the ball of that foot should stay on the line and rise up through it. That if you back an off, you're, you're seal. tending to guarantee a miss. The Osprey likely shooting below 50% on the night. Oh, most definitely. They're most definitely shooting below 50%. But again, like we were saying, like Horton is already in the penalty. Like they need to capitalize on this, these opportunities. Yep. It's Gray, nice little drop nice cross in floater. I'll tell you, this Akeem Gray is the player off the bench. He, uh, he came right back from where he left off in, in, the, in the first half. Trevay Jones, nice into the lane. That's it's a nice strong take. Strong. He's shown it, the gray kid has shown a nice presence in traffic. That's know? a nice strong take. And that was a, a, one of Trevay's better takes. Nice press break there by the Griffins. Beaten. Ooh. And Jones is going to be charged for the <coughs> personal foul. Of Horton's sort of settle it down, uh, takes and makes, the, the beaten kid has been pretty consistent in being involved in those. <coughs> Trevay's getting a just much needed rest. Yeah, and I don't know, he just picked up the personal. He's got at least three. At least three, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Him being in foul trouble would be an issue. And it's and actually it's been Jackson. a real good quarter for Ambrose. It's now a basketball game, and uh, he could use the rest, and you get the in-between quarter rest as well, so good sub. Something about these third quarters when we're on the call together, Ben. Something about these third quarters when we're on the call together. Hey, third quarters are big time. Yeah. They're big time. Always have been. Nadeau, over now for Berglund Simmons. He'll settle it down, fakes the handoff, and looking for Brown. Wasn't where he expected. Jalen got himself up in the air before he probably Ruben needed to be. That's Horton's, a tough pass. Horton's that's taking a one-point lead here. Beaten. Again, bring the double. Stewart did well. That's a big rebound, rebound there. Here comes Nadeau up the right wing. And by Moore. Stewart brings the ball screen, Nadeau. 10 on the shot clock, kicks it out for Mantley. Extra pass. Berglund Simmons triple. No, ripped away by Newcomb. And Horton with a chance to go two for one here. Redden, now Moore puts up a three. No, Beaton, and that's gonna be over the back on big Noah Beaton. Jalen, Jalen looks like he just got injured. Another ankle injury is the last thing the Osprey need. Is, is another it, is injury. Is an injury or a cramp, Liz? Not sure, I just saw him come down, you know, right down. As Pro Yeti and Beals check back in. <coughs> and we're gonna have two shots here for the Griffins. Or sorry, now for the, the Osprey. The typical thing that would emerge at this stage from the Horton bench is how come that's over the back, but down right. here isn't. But again, it's the difference of anatomy. <laughs> Yeah, when you know. you're laying on his back and trying to rebound as opposed to not even touching him and going straight up and down, um, it makes the difference. And again, depending on how long and whatever you are is a factor in how getting away with being able to do that. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not sure, but I think Ermbury might have just gotten away with something. I believe it was Cale Brown who that foul was committed on. And I did, I, yeah, I thought <laughs> when I saw, saw him going to the line, I thought, hmm. But Mm. Only to know if the refs didn't notice, he'll take the two I points. I suspect you so might be correct. Trample. I'm not sure. Because they sub they sub Kale off. Yes. Oh, there's that second row thing we were talking. And there's your we steal. Mantley, nice Edmund push. Finish that. Oh, yeah. Kicks it to the corner. Nadeau finds Stewart, and he's fouled. A bit of a ticky tack foul there. What do you think about the decision on the fast break? Pro Yeti had a layup. There was a defender in front of him. He kicks it to Nadeau in the corner. Yeah, again, it's one. Of, it's a choice thing. It's part of the modern game kind of thing. I would rather see him just make the layup. Yeah, I would have rather him just take the layup. Because uh, when he kicked, 
He kicked to Ollie, who was in a not a great angle and already semi-doubled before he caught it. Um, whereas Sam had good momentum, had the lane, you know. But again, it's a part of the modern game, and it's a you know it's the three-two, it's the analytics, it's all of that. Hey, call me old school if you want, but I completely agree with you two. Yeah. I would have liked yeah. to see him go up for the layup. Well, even in analytics, it's it's layups or threes, right? So, but again, it's it's you're talking about young people, you know, learning and watching. Clock, and the clock is down to four, and Gray did not get the roll. What a third quarter! And the Osprey take a two point advantage into the fourth and final quarter. I assume final. The way this game's going, who knows? We may be headed for overtime, but Armbray. So they were down Well, it's 16. a basketball game now. Yeah. They outscored by 18 points. Uh, Armbre outscored Horton in that third quarter. Yeah, I think the Armbre team that you saw in the third quarter is totally not the team we saw in the first half. Um, and again, like we said, there obviously was a conversation of urgency in the locker room, and they played that way. The other thing that I, that I noticed for Armbre was they, they actually stayed in motion all the time. It didn't look like they were dropping their heels. It didn't look like they were waiting for something to happen. They initiated a lot of what happened in that third quarter. Um, they tried to press in the first half, but it wasn't the same type of press or the same, same intensity of the press. So yeah, well, that made all the difference in the world. And, and frankly, the change to the sort of the 2-2-1, two, two, basically, which is a, you know, you're, it's a zone, but you're matching in the zone, and they're matching passing lanes, did a much better job of taking away passing lanes. Right. And their kids were gapping the lanes much better in it That's than right. they were in the man-to-man. -man. They tend to play a little bit too hugging their guy. The man, yes. And got drawn away from, the, the key, no matter what kind of pressure you're doing, is to try to force the opponent to play in areas of the court where they really don't want to play and aren't going to have nearly as much success. Their man-to-man -man pressure had no success in achieving that. Mm. The 2-2-1 two, two, has had a lot of success in achieving that. And, and it draws to the strengths of, of, of the Armbre players because they are quick footed, because they are athletic, and you know they can shoot the gaps, and they want to shoot the gaps. Those are the type of players they have. And again, once you have some success, it builds. <laughs> you know, you get a little bit more interested, right? A little right? bit of roll, yeah. As we get set to begin the fourth quarter. Interesting, Horton didn't even really huddle with their coach. Sorry. No. Guys were, yeah, they didn't, didn't huddle with their coach or go over to the sideline barely at all during that quarter break. Interesting. I didn't notice that actually. I wasn't, I was sort of looking for other things. But I, when they first came, so they didn't sit down? They, they went for about 30 seconds. And, and then, then they came right back onto on the, the court, court and talked to each other. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So well, we'll see how they respond after being outscored by 18 points in that third quarter. Pro Yeti. And I'm going to start with Trouvé back on the floor. So we'll see uh, what kind of impact he'll have. Oh. And a miscommunication there. Pro Yeti yeah, and, and, and just, uh, yeah. Miscommunication is probably the accurate term. As it will be Horton Ball in the front court. Should be 14 on the shot clock. We have 14 on the shot clock, so sideline inbound here for the Griffins. They get it in for Gray. They come out in the 2-3, two, 2-1-2, two, 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 zone. They, they've actually had reasonable, reasonably effective defensive possessions using this against some pretty good teams so far this season. And I don't think they've had a chance to practice it very much, to be honest with you. Nice they get it in now for Johnson. And unable to finish there was Redden. Beals. Pro Yeti. Open. Corner three. No. But that's a good look. That's a wide open look, and that's the kind of shot that you want to give him. Put him in that position to make those shots. As triple from Johnson. Rebound into the hands of Redden, and he'll finish Again, the second chance bucket. Treve goes up. The two top guys, if they're at the dots on that, Armbray gets the defensive board. They presume that he would take care of it for them. You can't do that. And Will Stewart playing the center of that zone, so a rare two big lineup as Beals too strong on the layup attempt, and here come the Griffins the other way. Nuka. Cut off by Jones. 
Now Gray floats it up from the free throw wow. line. Soft He's touch. been very effective for them in the in in particularly in around foul line and in. He just sealed Renai off and it was just like give me the ball. Pro Yeti. Hammer One more pass. Top of the key is Jones and he shuffled that foot. Yeah. The uh, the ideas there were good, but you know, Tavay's not a three point shooter per se. Shuffled while thinking about the move kind of thing. But the ball movement leading to it, ideas were good it's about who's where right now. You know, it just had bad, bad fortune kind of thing. Good D. Johnson wanted the foul. Outlet. Flipped it up looking for the contact. Nadeau coming the other way. Jones, top of the key. This time he'll drive right, takes a bump, and is rejected by Johnson. And he let him know about it. Shot clock should, should no not shot be clock, yeah. Yeah. So baseline inbound here for Nye Johnson and the Osprey trailing by two. 8.01 remaining. Priotti on the cut. Pro Yeti rather, and he turned it over on the catch. Yeah, I mean, th there's a little bit of a momentum change right now. You can feel the energy. No one has really scored a whole lot, but you can feel the energy that Horton's brought to this fourth quarter. So they're going to try and build on this. Johnson, well done with the bounce pass to beat the trap. Now Gray, top of the key. Shot clock down to 14. Ooh. Gray attacks. Too much English on that one. And here comes Pro Yeti. Dribbled it off of Jones's foot. Pro Yeti has to get it across half and barely beat the eight second. Johnson crosses. He dribbled off his own foot that Neither time. Neither team has figured out how they want to play offense this, this quarter yet. No. Attacking the close out and kicking it out was Moore. He gets it back in the corner. No. Redden got away with a little push. I think back. I thought it was also. Gray, three, no. Third chance opportunity on the offensive glass. Moore fakes the three. Now Johnson. Horton. All kind of passes, nothing going, and a foul Ooh. will be three shots for Newcomb. I don't think Jones gave him the landing space. That's what the official uh, Ryan Maxwell, I believe, seemed to indicate. No landing space. <laughs> You're both I, incredulous. The coach is over there looking, I think, to see how many fouls that is on Truve. They didn't announce what number it was when they called his foul. But yeah, they said he's got four. Okay. I didn't see it clearly enough, uh, frankly, to, to, to have anything to say. But uh, Yeah, I was kind of surprised that it was a foul Because as you know, if I did see it clearly, I'd tell you what I thought I saw. <laughs> I know you would, Bev. As Newcomb hits two of three from the line, and it's a four-point advantage for the Griffins. Johnson now. Miscommunication. Another turnover. I think it's the uh, same way. Well, we had an inadvertent reset once again here. Just got to let the shot clock breathe. Well, you know, the, the these tournaments, I mean, indiv different individuals get called into <laughs> doing table duty who haven't maybe had much experience doing it. And it takes, we talked about this, takes a while to learn how to do it. Required skill for sure. As the oh, oh push. definite push off. A loose yeah. ball foul is going to go against Moore. Yeah. My guess is he didn't intend that to be quite as violent as it turned out to be. But yeah, it was a classic battle for the loose ball, but he got caught yeah, with just a shove. The way people happen to be, where people happen to be. So it's going to be a sideline inbound here. Moore might have four fouls as well, just gesturing from. Uh, the Horton coach as Beals looking to break down Newcomb long two off front iron. Newcomb brings it across half. Triple by Johnson. No more battling oh, for the good rebound. Board. And Johnson. That was a good battle by Nye. He was yeah. outnumbered and outsized, but outsized. He, he, he created that defensive board with Instead hustle. This afternoon. He is an impressive rebounder for a player his height. Yeah, he, def he definitely can battle with any player out there. And 
Nadeau's going to be called Actually, for the, the shuffle. Actually, Nadeau does a lot of really good stuff. When he can learn to whatever it is that's causing him to just miss those finishes that he creates very smoothly, uh, he can really turn a corner because he, he gets there in what looks like flow and balance and then it just too often comes short. Noah beaten into the game for the first time this fourth quarter. Misses, but fair to clean it up. Grace penetration and kick created that opportunity. And the second chance or second chance points have been a big advantage in favor of the Griffiths. Oh. Feels tied up. Might have had some contact up top. Um, that affected that. Right? So it looks like to me the arm has gone back to what they were doing in the first half. It looks like they haven't, they're not settling down, they're not taking their time, looking for a proper shot. Well, again, up until that time, how many attempts didn't begin in one of the guard alleys and go Yeah, into exactly. The and that, that didn't work for them well. It's not an effective angle to attack from one on five. Jones turns it over. Turn Moore over. gets downhill, floats, doesn't finish, beaten. And it's going to be another second chance opportunity for Horton. Leading by three as Elijah Mantley will check back in. Play some grown ideals here. Randall nice turns shit. it over on the inbound as Pro Yeti steals it away. Pro Yeti trapped. Jones gets has over. to get it over and does. Nadeau now just knocked down a triple. Lost the handle. Good defense there by Johnson. Oh! And he got tied up. And Very fortunate. Another. When you find yourself, I always tell kids, traffic causes accidents. Yes. Okay? When you find yourself in heavy traffic, adjust. Or, even better yet, get the ball out of the traffic. That's right. As quickly and securely as you possibly can. Oh, yeah. Johnson had a clean poke. That, that was a good defensive play. And then reached forward. That's right. Stepped all over the uh, foot ankle of Nadeau, tripped him up. Nadeau hobbles off the court. That's a great rebound by Nye right. Johnson there. Well, there's, there's, the there's essence of Nye at his best. I mean, he just went up off the floor just to he get that. that. Like, yes, yeah, definitely. That's a nice take. Great That's nice a great hand. take. Notice the angle. It's from what I call the slant. It's yes. not from guard alley. Now Pro Yeti on the cut, tied up. And that's going to be I'm not sure he ball. needed that dribble. I think he could have caught that inside and just put that up. So we got ourselves a three-point game, 4.51 remaining in regulation. Jalen's been a little quiet this second half. He hasn't uh, been well, involved much. Remember he heard, him, he heard something there. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. More now. Finds Gray. Thought about the three. He'll attack the closeout. Extra pass. Johnson. Straight away three. No. Good looking shot there for the Griffins. Just couldn't knock it down. Jones now. Yep. Finds a cutting Berglund Simmons. There you go. There nice, you go. That was nice patience by Treve and nice back door by Jalen. And then he finished strong. Yeah, got himself solid. Got a good angle off the glass. Cuts the lead to one. Take care of it. And a one and done there for the Griffins. Armbre has a chance to take a lead with the score here. Using Treve as a point guard a little bit. Berglund Simmons now over to the left wing for Nye Johnson. Johnson will attack middle, gets back to his left hand. That is a in. tough move by Nye. He's flexing a little bit out there. He knows what, what that work took to get that, make that happen. Nearly a turnover there. But they will well, that's done. Good. Yeah. Sam's got to see John. that at center court. He's got to know that that player's there and play him before the ball gets there. Berglund Simmons now, 3.30 remaining in regulation. Oh, One point oh. lead for Horton. Beaton is called for the foul and that might be five. We'll find out momentarily here. I actually think the foul was out before that on the floor and not a shot, but the referees didn't call it there. They called it the next one, so it gives Armbray the opportunity. Well. Yeah, it gives Armbray the opportunity to go to the line and and uh, make a couple free ones. And it is Beaton's fifth personal, so so a big foul. 
Big foul for Horton because Beaton is a power player in there. He should be coming out I if that's his. Indicate five. Yeah, he they should not. They better indicate more uh, <laughs> yeah. aggressively then. Okay. Maybe not. Jones hits so. the second. So they're going to try. Oh, well, they're not leaving him we on don't the floor. Know so. Yeah. I think they just got away with something. Unless. So apparently it's not his fifth. We don't know what it, what, what number it is, but. Okay, yeah. Sakeem Gray brings it across. Now Newcomb. Swing pass. And Moore is fouled on the drive. He'll on that one, you've got him at a bad angle. Step in, be just, there. Just straight up. Hands straight up, yeah. exactly. And let him miss. You've, you've done what you need to, to do. I think Jalen tried to go up with him on that possession to try and block him with two hands when he didn't need and, to do all that. Exactly. You've already accomplished what you were trying to do because he's now in an off-balance, bad angle situation. Mm -hmm. If he makes the shot, okay. miracle <laughs> for him, great job. But you've done everything you should do defensively. Not the time to reach and compound it. Well, tied up, 79-79. It's a whole new ball game here with 3-11 to play. This second half has, has been interesting. We've seen it a, a bit of a chess match, both coaches making adjustments. Uh, you know, speaking of momentum, who do you think has some momentum heading into the final stretch of this? And, and neither team. Your, uh, yeah. Neither team is a basketball game right now. It's a basketball game. Yeah. The, it's, it's One possession at a time. of possessions, basically. Yeah. And I think it's going to come down to the team that actually is going to take their time and look for the best possessions um, and be more focused and under control. So we'll see who that happens to be. Using your chess analogy one more step, it's about end game. Mm -hmm. Well, we've seen Armbray in a lot of uh, close games. Yeah, all of this is at this stage of the season. Again, they're probably playing too many games right yeah. now, but it ain't going to hurt them as far as the situational, and it really will enable their coaches to teach and and have great examples to draw on as they teach. Sam Moore on the free throw line, shooting two, knocks down the first, gives the Griffins a one point advantage. Good and touch. The second Much better as you like. follow through on that one. I have to say, I think if, if, if uh, Horton pulls this out at the end, I think that's where it's going to be make the difference on the foul line. Berglund Simmons now hands it off for Nadeau. Jones, top of the key. Looks to attack, beaten off the handle. Nadeau, catch and shoot three, halfway down, rims out. You got to crash those boards. You got to shoot your, you got to crash the boards. Whoa. Moore lost his footing, able to recover. Now Johnson, looking over the left wing. Shot clock down to 10. Johnson drives, floats, gets the roll. Touch. Berglund Simmons looking to answer with a long two. Bev, you didn't like that one. I didn't like it either. <laughs> he didn't have his teammates back. Low percentage back. and no boards. Yeah, didn't have his teammates back. And again, it's not... You're not going to get everything in one shot, right? So it's one possession at a time right now. Newcomb over now for Mason Johnson. Beaten, post touch, kick out, straight away three more. Fortunate Rinzo, for Armbray but if Newcomb they can come cleans away with it, it up and, and cleans gets up the boards. Opportunity. Free throw shooting and rebounding has been the story of this one. That's back over. Horton's on a 6 0 run right now and. Uh, Arm brace, you know, adding on to their turnovers. Tough execution over the last minute and change coming out of that timeout for the Osprey. Sideline inbound here, on 14 on the shot clock. Newcomb up top for Moore. Post touch for Beaton. Draws the double, mm -hmm. kicks for Gray. He'll attack baseline. Oh, what a, what a great, what Get a great there. stop there, defensive stop by Jones. This possession is going to be very important. This is a huge possession right here. Fields on the right wing. He'll attack. 
Beautifully done. Good job. on that second step. Yeah, I mean, he composed himself. He got the two feet and he finished off. Four point ball game, a minute 22 to go. Gray drives baseline. Kicks it out for Mason Johnson. Shot clock down to 10. Johnson attacks middle. Doesn't get it to go. Bad reset again. Did he get I don't a say rim that didn't that? hit that didn't hit the rim, yeah, I, don't I don't think. I don't think he got a rim. It did not. Yeah. And Horton will take advantage. That's the smart thing Most to do. Most definitely. Here. Johnson on the left wing. Rip through. Oh, tough finish over the shot blocker for Bay Jones. Right that over is a top. Big time finish by Mason Johnson. Yeah, no, he's he stepped up this this the, within the last three minutes, two, three minutes, and uh, he's he's put wants the ball in his hands. Horton's got some kids on the perimeter that can play. I mean, you know, they, they, uh, they, they, uh, and again, composure and poise wise, what we talked about in terms of end game thus far, Horton has, has done that. And I don't know the difference in Horton's roster because I don't see grades compared yeah. to Armbrace. So maybe they have some grade 12s that are a little more mature and understand time and score. Um, but that's no excuse for you know what's what's happening. But they have definitely um, been more composed over the last two minutes. Yeah, yeah. I should do my valley-based research and find that out about them. I'm, I'm more aware of the Horton girls team right now. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, they certainly have played as if they're more experienced. They have played that way for sure, for sure. Well, I, I think. I do not believe it will be streamed on Maritime Athletic tomorrow, but Millwood and Horton will be a good test. Uh, two teams that we've seen really battle. My guess is that Millwood's depth will be a factor in that game. It'll be interesting to see. And of course, the format of this tournament, the top two teams in either pool will advance to the semifinals. So. Armbury might have found themselves in an early hole here. I lost. think so. I, yeah, I think so. They're not, uh, if they don't pull this one out, I think they're going to not be in the semifinals. As Nadeau, sideline inbound, gets it in for Johnson. Swings I mean, they, have more, than, they have more than enough time to make it happen for sure. Berglund Simmons out for Jones. That was a set play to get Nadeau a look. Now the shot clock's down to five. Clock. Beals open three Tough. short. And again, no rebounds. Everybody's standing flat-footed. The, um, the initial the design shooter. was actually pretty good to get all yeah. of the three in the corner, but then the, it was defended well, and then I think they lost uh, awareness of the shot clock. But even the great shot, wide open shot for an eye there, but then defensively, nobody moved to rebound. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because that's a, that's a makeable shot by Renai for sure. But too much clock had been used to lead to that. With 23 seconds, Armbray needs a quick score and a stop. Mm. And, that and, will not and now it. a turnover. As they're not going to foul, and well, they will foul, only because Moore was about to have an easy reverse layup, and that will send him to the line to potentially ice this game. Although, did you see the Vermont come back this week? Pardon? Vermont uh, in the NCAA. Right. They were losing by six with 1.2 seconds. <laughs> so I saw that. It ain't over till it it's can, over. It can happen. Yeah. What what did transpire? The they difference? were trailing by six. Yeah, 1.2. Uh, they got a three. There was an offensive foul on the inbound. Yep. And then yeah, before they the play got came a four-point play and actually won in regulation. Yep. Seven points and 1.3 seconds. Yeah, yeah. But with seven-point deficit here, well, Osprey need a score. Berglund Simmons gets his own rebound. One more pass. No real urgency for the Osprey. Nadeau, deep three. No. Yeah, that Jaylen, will do it for this ideally, one. you want to score or get fouled on that. So Horton holds on. They had a big first half lead. The third quarter was all Osprey. But give credit to Horton coming together down the stretch and executing. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, uh, Osprey brought themselves right back into the game, took a lead. Um, and Horton just never let it bother them. They just regrouped, um, and they just figured out, you know, this is time for us to do what we have to do. And the last three minutes, they just took over. Um, and again, for Horton, there wasn't any turnovers in that last three minutes where at Armbre, that's where their Achilles heel was. They got the turnovers. Hate to say it, but this is what young teams do. Young teams learn by failing, and then 
you know, ideally are a little more open to hearing what the feedback is going to be and then go out and try their best to overcome that uh, and do so to some extent, but then they slip back to old habits for a bit, then, and it's a process. It's well, back and forth, bit by bit. And Armbury's been in, a, in, in the same position um, a couple times, even in league play, where they've played some really strong teams and they've had them on leads. Even this afternoon, from what I was told, mm -hmm. with Millwood, they had the lead and then just didn't know or weren't able to figure out how to get the win. But the lead today, earlier today uh, against Millwood, Les, was early. Okay, I want quick yeah. predictions. Player of the game for each team. Uh, player of the game for me for Horton is um, is uh, Gray. I would give it to Gray yeah. for for Horton. Probably and 16 off the bench. bench. Yep, yep. And and for Armbre, I'd have to give it to Renai Beals. Cravey Jones got it this afternoon. I, I thought he had another. Uh, and they spread them game. around. These yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I don't. Well, <coughs> it's I don't predict because I. You have to again. They do spread them around, so it's often kind of. I like uh, Nye Johnson as well. Had a, had a great game. Didn't score the most, but did a lot of little things. But is, is, is one for one. It is Ronai Hills. Yeah. Deals. yeah. Uh, very talented. But there's a couple guard. players from Horton that definitely could get it, most definitely. Yeah, number five, number four, five. both had yes. solid games. Yes, yes. At least a couple. Yeah, yeah, at least a couple. Yeah, yeah. maybe even more than a couple. And I'm going number five. Number 12, oh, Noah Yeah, there you go. So yeah. He didn't he definitely fouled and he got player of the game. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we're going to wrap th it up I thought for the just night. quickly, I thought, yeah. well, at their best, Armbre played very well as a team. Horton played very well as a team for more of the game. Yes, yes, definitely. I would agree. Okay, we're going to wrap it up for the night, but I do really want to quickly run through tomorrow's schedule. 10 a.m., Woodlawn versus CEC. 12 p.m., Sydney Academy versus Bayview. 2 p.m., Millwood versus Kennebecasis Valley. 4 p.m., CEC versus Sydney Academy. Horton will be in action at six as they take on Millwood. And finally, the hosts, Armbre Ospreys, take on Kennebecasis Valley at 8 p.m. We'll have that action right here on Maritime Athletic Profiles. For myself, Alan April, Coach Leslie States, Coach Bev Greenlaw, Producer Dylan, Camera Operator Spencer, and our whole crew here from Maritime Athletics and Armbre Athletics, thank you for watching live coverage of the 2023 Osprey Winter Classic. We'll see you tomorrow.
Your gifts directly contribute to real, tangible change on our campus and will immediately impact all of our students. With your support, we can expand our programs and fund enhancements to our classrooms and co-curricular learning experiences. Your gift, no matter the size, can make a difference. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thanks to your generosity, we were able to outfit our science lab with state-of-the-art microscopes. When we pool our resources together, we can make a significant impact on the Armory experience for our students. All gifts, regardless of size, have the power to inspire. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. At Armbre, the annual fund campaign is really the backbone of our fundraising efforts. That's because the projects are designed to enhance the learning of current students. So we conceive of and raise funds for the project this year, for example, and then we launch it next year. In the past, you've supported projects like smart board upgrades in classrooms, classroom furniture upgrades, playground equipment, uh, the new class set of microscopes in the science lab, and of course the new bike shelter that's being built this week. So thank you for your support of those projects. Like all independent schools, tuition fees only cover about 85% of our operating costs. So it's through the generosity of donors like yourselves that we're able to bridge that gap. This year's projects include um, musical instruments, visual art equipment, and smart board upgrades across all divisions, and of course our scholarship and bursary fund as well. In the coming weeks and months, you'll be given opportunities to support the project or projects of your choice. And I just wanted to take a moment here to thank you in advance for doing so. Thank you for your support. 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 Thank you for your support.